This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. Alpha Natural Resources, an energy company dedicated to respecting the land. Alpha Natural Resources, we power the world through the energy of our people. Haley Buick GMC, the place for a new Verano or Terrain Denali. In Richmond and online at HaleyBuickGMC.com. Everywhere there are lighting poles, there's one more opportunity to save money. Intelligent Illuminations provides cost-effective wireless lighting solutions for roadway or area outdoor lights. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. So what do you do? Information about getting involved in advanced technology careers, making everything from clean energy to life-saving medicine, is available at dreamitdoitvirginia.com. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you. Welcome to This Week in Richmond, and a very special welcome to Secretary Maurice Jones, Secretary of Commerce and Trade. We appreciate your being on and helping our viewers better understand your secretariat. Uh, as I look at it, you've got a board, you've got departments, you, you've got authorities, you've got commissions, you've got quite a bit that's in your area of, of service to the Commonwealth. So. Start off at any part of it you'd like to and help, help our viewers better get a better grasp. Okay, I'll try. Uh, <laughs> it is. There are about 12 or 13 different entities. But, you know, I think uh, as I think about it, it's I've got uh, entities that are involved in economic development in the state, right? So you've got the Tourism Board, you've got, or the Tourism Authority, you've got the Virginia economic development partnership, you've got the Department of Housing and Community Development. I'd put the, those entities in the economic development, uh, if you will, theme. Then I've got some entities that are involved in workforce development, mm -hmm. uh, the most prominent of which is uh, the Virginia Employment Commission. Right? And then I've got community development, right? And so you've got a host of, you've got uh, the department now we call it Small Business and Supplier Diversity, which is the merger of two uh, departments. Uh, they are they are probably prominent. So so is Housing and Community Development there. The last piece of it is the regulatory group that is involved in all of that. So you've got what they call DPOR, which is a ton of boards that regulate various industries. Cosmetology, for example, is one of them. Uh, you've got uh, what else in there that I would put in the regulatory group. That may be the largest piece in the regulatory group where you've got the Department of Mines, Minerals, and Energy that plays both a regulatory uh, role as well as a really critical role for the development of the energy sector uh, in the state. And so, you know, you put them all together, it's community development, it's economic development, it's, it's regulatory, it's workforce development. It's quite, it's quite a, an area of, of expansive area. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're back in state government yes, because uh, some of the viewers here in central Virginia, and not just the ones in Southside and Kenbridge, <laughs> what was just originally home for you, but yes. others know you from your previous service and a previous administration. Yep. I was with Governor Warner. I was both his deputy chief of staff and then I was the commissioner of the Department of Social Services. So not too long ago. No, no. Uh, and then the stint, part of the stint in between was in Norfolk and then some in D.C. So That's right. So I left Governor Warner's administration and I went down to Norfolk to the Hampton Roads area and, and got into the media business and was the uh, publisher of the Virginian Pilot and the, the 
president of the pilot media company, if you will, which had the pilot in some niche publications as well. And then I went up to HUD uh, two years ago now, and uh, I became the deputy secretary for HUD for a couple of years, and then came back here. So yeah, well, it's uh, good good to have you back on this side nice of the Potomac. Back. Nice this to be side, back. This yes. side of the Potomac. So uh, is the on the economic development part. Talk talk a little bit more about that because it seems like almost daily there's an announcement coming out of jobs here or jobs there or new business coming into the Commonwealth. So, yes. Uh, which the governor's involved in as well as I'm sure you are Absolutely. too. Absolutely, yes. Um, well, so here's the context, right? So Virginia uh, lost a fair chunk of jobs during the recession, mm -hmm. and we're beginning to gain back jobs now post the recession. We're still, as of the end of last year, though, 122 jobs, 122,000 jobs mm -hmm. below what our peak was prior to the recession. So we are focusing a lot of energy on doing what the state can do to be a good partner in helping to generate jobs. So yes, you see a lot of announcements that are about us attracting uh, businesses to come here and either set up headquarters or expand their operations here. You see a fair number of announcements that are about existing businesses that are already in the state who are expanding here and growing jobs and making a capital investment. Uh, and we need all of that. And then there is a fair amount of work that we do that's in the area of just retaining what we have, right? Making sure we're not losing any more jobs to other states or to Mexico or wherever. And so the economic development piece of this job is a critical piece uh, given where the economy is and where we want to go uh, both for uh, jobs directly for people but also for the revenue that those jobs put into the coffers of state and local government as well so that's a critical part of what we do in the secretariat you know i, I would think that it may be one of the most challenging part is the retaining at times in keeping businesses as other states start, states our country start courting yes. and trying to get them yeah. to move. So that's a great point. Uh, I, I tell people all the time, this is a contact sport, right? This is, people compete for these jobs. Right. So all the time we have businesses that come to us and say, hey, you know, just got a pretty good deal to move to fill in the blank Charlotte. Uh, and um, the question for us is why should we stay here in the Commonwealth of Virginia? And so, yeah, we have to compete to keep our employers and our jobs here just as much as we have to compete to try to attract uh, new, um, new employers and new jobs to the state. And we're doing that both domestically um, and we're doing it internationally. So absolutely. And that's the thing, that competition now is not just North Carolina and Tennessee and Kentucky and whomever. It's also Mexico, mm -hmm. right, and, and mm -hmm. other countries. So we're having to compete to keep jobs here and to attract jobs here globally. And, and when the governor, along with others of you, go to some country overseas, you really are trying to get companies that are there to either expand and have an operation here or maybe in some cases just move, Absolutely. move their entire Absolutely. operation. Absolutely, yeah. Unabashedly, that's yeah, what going. we do. <laughs> right. and, and yet we, they let you come into that country. And they, <laughs> yes, they still do. They still do. We, we were yeah. in, uh, frankly, it's not just going into another country. It's going into another state. Oh, Two weeks yeah. ago, uh, we were, the governor and I and, and uh, Secretary Haymore for Agriculture, we were all in, in the Virginia Employment uh, Economic Development Partnership. We were in Chicago, and we were out there talking to companies that are out there saying, here's the place for you to be, best state in the common or in the country for business. Come here. We are, are the place that uh, you can be profitable, you can get good talent, and you can be in a state that uh, embraces uh, business and growth and jobs. Uh, so, yes, we're doing that everywhere. 
You know, often you hear, whether it's legislators or members of the executive branch, talk about that number one rating in this, number two in that. Is that, is that really helpful? It is. It is helpful. Um, it gets people's attention. It's a uh, brand. Yes. Right? Yes. And so a brand gets people's attention. But then, of course, at the end of the day, uh, the brand alone is not the dispositive factor, right? The dispositive issue is uh, can you live up to the promise of the brand, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. are you providing me uh, services and feedback at business speed, right? Not at government speed, at business speed. Um, what are the taxes like? What kind of, um, what kind of uh, employees will I have? What are your universities like? What's your uh, school system like? What are the amenities you have in your communities? That's at the end of the day. That's what sells. That's what mm -hmm. really, that's what closes the Clo deal. Closes, yes. Right? The brand yes. certainly gives you an opportunity because who's going to uh, not be um, moved by number one state in the country for business? Okay, I'll look at that if I'm a business. But at the end of the day, what closes the deal is the substance behind the the brand and that's what we have to constantly work on making sure that we're not resting on the brand that we are in fact making the right choices making the right investment decisions to keep the substance behind the brand unequaled by anybody else and that's a that's a day-to-day -day job yes yes now on that long list if anyone goes on your website we'll make sure we give them the, the address <laughs> yes. and they go on there on the particularly on the page that has all those agencies they find on there the tobacco indemnification and community revitalization sure. commission yeah. and and while you don't have I might say authority over that commission you participate in it you're and as and as we said you have roots in south side and tobacco absolutely. growing region absolutely and uh, any any thoughts about how that commission has helped in, in revitalizing it, South Side? Yeah, the, so the Tobacco Commission does focus on, if you will, the tobacco areas, and that's primarily the rural counties in South Side, Virginia, and then Southwest. Mm -hmm. And it is a huge economic development tool that started with about a billion dollars to make investments uh, there and now has about 350 million plus. Uh, it is involved in investments in education, uh, investments in healthcare, investments in the energy sector. Um, it has made a huge, I, I, I was mentioning before we started the show, I was in Brunswick County which is the neighboring county to mm -hmm. Lunenburg County, where I grew up, uh, two weeks ago, where we were announcing the, uh, probably the biggest economic development announcement in Brunswick County in quite some time. It's, it's a power station that Dominion Resources, Dominion Virginia Power is uh, launching there. It's gonna be enough power to, to provide electricity to 350,000 plus homes. Uh, it, there will be, uh, somewhere around, depending on what phase of the construction, uh, like a thousand jobs involved. Um, huge, huge employer, huge uh, uh, promotion to the tax base. Well, um, they, the power station needed natural gas. Mm -hmm. The Tobacco Commission did a $30 million grant for the, the natural gas infrastructure to come into that plant can't beat that. Mm -hmm. You cannot beat that. So the commission is doing some good stuff all over the place. We just have to make sure that we're being as strategic as we can possibly be with the resources that make up the tobacco commission. And also now that we're now at 350 million as opposed to a billion, right? The question becomes what, what the legacy is going to be for the commission. And I sit on the, uh, I am a commission member. Uh, in addition to that, the head of the commission uh, and members of the commission are appointed by, some of them are appointed by the governor. So uh, there is, uh, there's influence there, there's partnership, and uh, I see it as a real asset to, to partner with in the economic development journey of Southside and Southwest. You know, we, we like to think that our viewers understand how that commission got its first money. 
But it's, it's really remarkable, I think, of what Virginia did, and not all states did that. That's right. That got some settlement money where, that's they, right. where they really created a fund that's being able to be used. I, what I understand, some states have just, I don't want to say frittered away, but, th but they used the money to balance their budget. I think and that's right. It's gone. Right. To my knowledge, not all states actually set up an, an enterprise that would actually focus on those areas mm -hmm. where tobacco growing was most prevalent uh, within, the, within the state. Uh, and we did here in Virginia. So the, uh, the policymakers uh, have a lot to, to, to be proud of, and, and we certainly need to, to thank them for doing that. Absolutely. I was thinking some about some of the regulatory, if we switch over to that, because that, that may not be the part that takes as much of your time, but you have lots of people in agencies oh, sure. on down below you. You mentioned DEPOR, and our regular viewers know that that's Department of Professional and Occupational Regulation. That's good. Yeah, I yeah. shouldn't have used the acronym, Almost good. that's yeah. exactly yeah. right. But then if they, if they look, look up DEPOR, as they could find it on, on the website, then they would find, as you said, oh, yeah. all kinds of, uh, of professions that, that are regulated. Yeah, I think there are 40 plus boards that make up DEPOR, and that's right. It's, it's, um, you, there are all kinds of professions that are regulated in Virginia. I, I'm amazed. I still don't know all of them, right? I'm 100 I'm, plus no. days into the job, but uh, I take cosmetology as an example because we were just talking about cosmetology. Uh, but contractors are also uh, regulated. And the, the work of these boards uh, is critical. For, for one thing, uh, we, want, we are the best state in the union for, for business. But what that means is, or what that needs to mean, is that we've got a great balance between not putting too much red tape in the way of people actually getting into business, but by the same token, making sure we've got enough safeguards in place to protect our consumers. And these boards are in that business, right? The regulatory work of these boards is to thread that, to find that sweet spot between making sure we're not being bureaucratic, right? Mm -hmm. but, but making sure we are being prudent about uh, doing what we are supposed to do on behalf of our citizens. And yeah, it's across all kinds of industries. It's amazing. You know, unless someone should think that that's too much regulation, I, for one, would encourage them to take a look at those boards and to see that the regulations are there to protect the public. That's what they're there And for. that most of those entities requested to be regulated yeah. initially. They, they said, we want to be regulated because we don't want an unscrupulous, unlicensed this or that coming in and doing something that, bad. that is a great point um, because what you'll what you'll find from these industries is uh, that they want to protect their yes. brand yes right and so an unscrupulous player in their sector can tarnish the entire sector and so yes people want to make sure that they're frankly keeping out the bad apples and they've asked the state to help with that, no question about it. And I would challenge people as well, mm -hmm. we are a low regulation yes. state. Uh, it would be hard to make a credible argument to the contrary. Uh, do we need to get faster? Do we need to get smarter? Always. Uh, but our regulations are, are lean and mean. Uh, and as you say, um, it provides a service to the consumer, but also to the sector itself. Mm -hmm. and, and with those appointments made by the governor to people to serve on those boards, 90% or more of the ones that serve on those boards are from the profession that's being regulated. So yes. that, they, no, they, they volunteer their time to that's give right. their expertise. Right. And, and they know that they know the space. Yes, yeah. yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Well, now, let's talk a little bit about tourism, too, because yes. it, it's bound to be, as you whether you're in Chicago or whether you're overseas someplace, that Virginia tourism is really big. T tourism is a huge source of uh, resources for the quality of life of uh, the citizens. So some data on that. So last year, tourists spent $21.2 billion mm. in the state. Mm. That supported about 210,000 jobs across the state. 
that produced to the coffers of state and local governments about $1.4 billion in revenue. Tourism is good for Virginia. Uh, and tourism has been really good for the obvious places like <coughs> Northern Virginia, Hampton Roads, Richmond, but it's also been good for Southwest Virginia, for example. The Crooked Road is mm -hmm. an example of heritage tourism that has brought in millions of dollars for uh, several counties in Southwest Virginia. So yes, tourism is another area uh, for us that is vital to the health of the, of the economy. No question. And down that long list of your agencies and commissions is the Racing Commission. The Racing Commission is there yeah. as well, yes. It's, it, and that's the horse racing part. The horse racing part, it's, yes. It's been in the news a little bit. It recently. has been. I'm trying to keep it out of the news. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it has been. You know, the, uh, I'm, and I'm learning more and more. But right now, I have, I have some confidence that we're going to get a deal between uh, the, the horsemen, if you will, mm -hmm. and, and the owners of of the racetrack here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we have a horse racing industry and a horse breeding mm -hmm. industry in the state that frankly is probably underdeveloped, that we need to do more to try to develop and compete with the Kentuckys and others of the world. But we got a ways to go before we can get there, no question about it. Now, you mentioned also mines, minerals, and energy. Yes. That's another one of those large, uh, I guess fairly large operations that falls in your area. Very critical. It is the entity that uh, makes sure that the mining industry in this state, of which we have a, a pretty large one, is both productive and profitable and safe. So they regulate all the mines, right? They regulate the safety and health of the mines. And we have a very good record when it comes to safety in our mines. But they're also the entity that is helping Virginia move into the 21st century when it comes to energy production and energy use. So the offshore wind work that's going well, on. That falls under that, That too. falls there. The, uh, the work that we're trying to do around mm -hmm. Uh, moving forward the the solar and the in energy industry within the state mm -hmm. all of that the sort of alternative if you were the green energy all of that falls within uh, mines minerals and energy so does such controversial topics as is hydraulic fracturing that falls there as well mm -hmm. so it's a critical uh, enterprise within state government and you mentioned two agencies that combined and are now called Small Business and Supplier Diversity. Yes. Uh, tell our viewers something about that. So they, their job is to work in two areas. One, to help us with retaining, expanding, and attracting small businesses, but also helping us to uh, strengthen our small women-owned and minority-owned businesses and helping them in their efforts to do business with the state as well. So it's a combined mission now that we have in this merged entity. The entity did not merge, by the way, until January of this year. So it's very mm -hmm. much in the infancy mm -hmm. stage mm -hmm. of the merger. And we've got work mm -hmm. to do. I mean, the honest truth there is we've got to take two enterprises and make it into one. And that's a journey. And before our time's up, housing and community development. People might think they know what that is just by the name of it, but what sort of work do they do? So they are the entity within state government through which a lot of federal government resources dealing with housing and community economic development oh, flow. The, the HUD the connection. HUD yes, mm -hmm. yes. So uh, all of the HUD work or a lot of the HUD monies, the CDBG monies, flow through the Department of Housing and Community Development. They're also very involved in programs like the Main Street Program, which attempts to, uh, f uh, for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, it attempts to work with small localities throughout the state of Virginia to help them revitalize mm. downtowns, nice. bring back entrepreneurs, bring back into play buildings that may have been abandoned, et cetera. 
it's very much about community development, which means it has local strategies all over the place. It's a wonderful, wonderful agency. Secretary Marty Jones, I wish we had another 25 minutes. <laughs> we'll, talk Next time. we'll talk again soon, but Next thank time. you so much. For thank you for having me. We'll I have you back it. again. Thanks. Thank you. This Week in Richmond is made possible in part by Dignity Memorial, caring for our communities with a network of funeral homes and cemeteries in Virginia and throughout North America. More information about Dignity Memorial's providers is online at DignityMemorial.com. Alpha Natural Resources, an energy company dedicated to respecting the land. Alpha Natural Resources, we power the world through the energy of our people. Haley Buick GMC, the place for a new Verano or Terrain Denali. In Richmond and online at HaleyBuickGMC.com. Everywhere there are lighting poles, there's one more opportunity to save money. Intelligent Illuminations provides cost-effective wireless lighting solutions for roadway or area outdoor lights. The Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the voice of the Virginia business community, working in legislative, regulatory, and political arenas to promote the free enterprise system. So what do you do? Information about getting involved in advanced technology careers, making everything from clean energy to life-saving medicine, is available at dreamitdoitvirginia.com. Additional support is provided by these sponsors. And by the members of Virginia's public television stations. Thank you.